Amazing. Yay, we go. Yes. Awesome. Great. Okay, we are super excited to be here with you today. Um, thank you so much, Jen and Taz, for that amazing introduction. Radio, beautiful radio voices. Um, so yeah, as they said, I'm Laura and this is Pilar. I'm Pilar. Um, we work on the charity engagement team. Um, so we're basically here to, to help you guys utilize the tools that you have in your Canada Helps account and make sure that you can be running awesome events, set up donation forms, and even set up like peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers. So for those of us, for those of you that join us uh, normally, you're probably used to seeing uh, Lucas and Jacob, but mm -hmm. we thought it was time for the women like to represent. Definitely. So today it's me and Pilar. Definitely. As you might have noticed, a little bit Raptors themed, we're still absolutely buzzing um, from the Toronto Raptors taking the championship. Mm -hmm. um, we had an amazing time watching the game all together and we were running through the streets of Toronto yes. until two in the morning. Exactly. One Just, of our colleagues, Lucas, yeah, stayed until 5 a.m., so, yeah. you know, number one fan out there, and, you know, Laura and I are pretty close, pretty close. We're getting there, we're getting there, yeah. we're just about learning the rules, but we, no, we're super behind yeah. the Raptors, for sure. Um, so, yeah, our uh, webinar has a slight Raptors theme to it today, so we thought, why not drag it out? We should keep celebrating all we deserve it. summer. Definitely, definitely. Awesome. So then what we'll do then is just uh, kind of go over the agenda real quick, just so you can get a sense of what we'll be talking about today. So what we're going to be doing uh, first, we'll look at the ticketed events tool. So we'll show you some examples. We'll show you um, how to use it then. We'll look at how to create one, um, how to set up those tickets with those split receipts. Then we'll show you how to manage that event um, and how you can add some of those offline donations and some other new features. Um, we'll also then move on to the peer-to-peer -to -peer tools so that you can get a sense of how to create one as well. We'll show you some real live examples of peer-to-peer -peer campaigns. Uh, we'll show you how to create that. We'll also go in the back end to show you how you would then manage a live campaign. And then at the end, we'll have some time for some questions as well. You say, yeah, we're going to try and fit this all yes. in. This is a lot, but we're going to get it in. We're psyched. So to get us started, um, we, we're going to run a poll. So we've got a really important question to ask you. Mm -hmm. We like to make these a little bit interactive if we can. So super important question uh, at the moment. So let us know what you guys think. And the results Thanks are so in. Much. Oh, okay. oh. Like pretty good. Oh, is that yes? Oh my God, I can't even good. see. Okay, this is good. We're optimistic. Yes, I, I love like it. it. I thought it was red for no. That's no, we're confused. good. We're good. Woo. Okay, I like this. So awesome. it seems like most people would stay. agree with us. Yeah, I like stay. the belief. So it. thanks, guys, for your optimism. That's the kind of energy that we want to be working off of today. Sure. So why don't we get started? Definitely. So, all right. So we're just going to be turning our webcam off just so we can have the full experience of showing you those examples. Um, so last little bit of uh, Raptors love. Let's go. <laughs> um, okay, let me switch this off. We good, Jen? Woohoo! Awesome. Okay, so I'm going to start you off um, by taking you through and having a look at events. So what are uh, what's the events platform for? What are you going to be using this for? So. This platform is basically awesome if you're running any ticketed events, um, but even anywhere where you basically want to send out a ticket to people, but even if it's just like a free event where you want to collect registration or manage everyone that's partaking in the event, um, it can be a super useful tool for that as well. So as Pilar said, we're going to start off by showing you a couple of examples, and then we're going to jump into the back end of the account um, and show you how you would actually set up one of those events. Um, so to start it off here, we will just jump over. Jenny, you're so good. You can see the screen. It's caught up. Perfect. So yeah, we've seen this tool be used for a whole host of different things. I mean, obviously the common one are those, you know, fundraising galas, fundraising dinners. And um, we're seeing a lot of golf tournaments be put through here um, at the moment. But I think we've seen a whole host yeah, of different things. Definitely. Movie screenings. Movie screenings. We've seen comedy shows. Comedy shows. We've even seen charities set up free tours, but they take attendance through the event tool and then they run a free tour through a garden or, or something along those lines. For sure. And even like in terms of free events, people have like information evenings. Mm -hmm. um, it, different things like that where they just want to know who's kind of coming. So a whole host of ways to use it. 
So this one is an awesome example. Um, so this organization, The Way Out, have put this together for their gala that they're running uh, in November. They're based in Montreal. So we wanted to show you this one because it's an awesome example of kind of utilizing all the different functions of uh, this tool. So just to start off here, you'll see um, this nice little banner image, which you can customize, um, you know, to go along with your event. You can put like, a nice big image up here. Maybe you've got this event going year after year and you've got a nice image from last year. Um, and it, this can be a great place to pop up sponsors as well. I've seen that on a few yeah, different examples it. before. So you can customize that. And then you can actually match kind of the colors of this page to um, either the event or maybe to your website. You have colors that you kind of carry through. Um, so you can choose from 10 different palettes and you can kind of match that up to make sure it kind of carries through your branding and colors. So just to sort of show you the different things that this, this platform has, one thing that's super important just up here are these share buttons here. So often when you're running these events, you want to shout about them loud and proud. Yeah, definitely. Um, so it's super easy to kind of um, hit these buttons. You can share across Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, email. So it's all about you've got this page, now get people sharing it, get people coming and buying tickets. A little bit further down here, um, you can kind of feature all of the different details about your event. So um, how many days are kind of left to buy, where the event's happening with a little map, which is always useful. Um, and then you can pop all of the details down here about your event. So a brief overview of what's going on. Let people know what you're up to. A couple of other things that um, this organization have, have popped onto there, one of which is a call for volunteers. Um, we know that this sector is heavily fueled by volunteers, a load of amazing volunteers. So this can be a nice way just to ask if, uh, for some help. Uh, a bit further down here, pop you know, organizer information, also some information about the charity, and then you can also pop up um, some more media. So images, you can pop up videos up here. They've just popped kind of two up, but you can put a whole carousel of images up there. And then a little bit further down here, just some more further details. So if you want to get in a little bit deeper, what's going on, who's involved, you can kind of feature all of that up there. So as a starter, great place to just kind of shout about what, what your event is. And then up here, you basically list all of the different ticket types that you'll have available for sale. So these guys have just got two up here, but you can actually have an unlimited number of tickets kind of on there. So what this basically allows you to do, and what's awesome about this platform, is that it offers split tax receipting. So if you do have an event where there's a paid ticket and there's some value back to the ticket purchaser, you can actually set that up as you set this event up. So what that means is, for example, this ticket here, $250 for an individual ticket. $150 is going back to the ticket purchaser in food, drink, I think it says here cocktails, this sounds like the kind of gala I would go to. <laughs> um, so there's only $100 left available to, to tax receipt for, so eligible for tax receipt. So you can actually set that up as you set these ticket types up. So the purchaser will come to this page, they'll select their ticket, they will then receive their ticket along with just the $100 eligible amount. The thing that's quite cool though is you can actually do that before the event but also after the event. So we know that often organizations run event and you're not quite sure of what's eligible for tax receipt until after that event has kind of completed. There's always additional expenses, things that you just want to calculate. So another thing that you can do is actually select, select post event tax receipting. What that means is the purchasers come to this page, they get their ticket, they kind of complete the transaction, they'll receive their ticket uh, along with that kind of email that says thank you for purchasing and then after the events happened once you know what's eligible for tax receipt log back into your account pop in how much is eligible click send and a tax receipt will go to everyone that's purchased a ticket so Pilar will dive into that a little bit yeah, more when definitely. she shows you how to set that up but that is a super awesome function that can kind of just take a bit of the admin work out of setting up one of these events Another thing you can do is actually switch the receipting off entirely. So if that's something, if there's no kind of eligible amount, you can also do that. So we can show you that as well a little bit later. Last kind of thing I wanted to mention on here as well was just this little donation ask. So this is something that can be toggled on, toggled off, but this can be a great way just to pop an additional ask in there. Um, and it just means that when people are going through this page, you know, they're already engaged with you. They want to buy a ticket. They want to come to your event. Or maybe they can't attend, but they still want to donate to you. So this can be a really nice place just to pop in an additional donation ask. And they can pop that in, and they'll be receipted for the donation immediately, um, no matter how you set up the receipting for the different ticket types. 
Um, so what we could do, should we maybe walk maybe just through and get a ticket? Yeah, definitely. Cool. What so it let's, look like? Yeah, we can just show you kind of how this works. Do you want to? Yeah, sure. Bit? Yeah. So we're just going to say, all right, we're just going to purchase one $250 ticket, and we'll also make a donation Beautiful. here. Uh, we'll just put in a $20 donation. So I would just hit get tickets. I'm able to see my order summary all the time at the top of my screen so I can review it and edit it if needed. Uh, in this case, we're logged into our Canada Helps account. So we already have a Canada Helps account, so there's no need to add our address and all of that information. So we're then able to continue uh, onto the next screen, which essentially is the checkout screen, so the payment details. Just to note, um, you don't have to have a, a okay. Canada Helps account to go through this purchase uh, okay. process, but it can speed it up so if people have already kind of given through Canada Helps before or they have an account, it just means these things can be pre-populated, but it's not a necessity. If you don't have an account, it will just ask you to kind of pop in those basic details. Exactly. So if we just click check out here. So once again, we're on the checkout screen. I see my order summary. If the payment information is the card that I, that I have in my account, that's the one I want to use. Like Laura said, I have that express checkout. I don't have to put in those credit card details. I'm able to right away check out and charge it to that card. Um, because I decided to add a donation along with this, I'm able to leave a charity, the charity a message to go along with my donation. So definitely a nice little place where donors can, you know, give you that feedback, give you that support, um, because a lot of times they definitely are looking to, to engage with you in that way. Well, Awesome. So yeah, you just the purchaser would simply click place order. They would get that email that says thanks for making uh, your purchase. Attached is the the receipt, uh, the ticket. Sorry, <laughs> tripping myself up. And then also obviously the tax receipt if you're doing that immediately, or that's something that will come later. Awesome. So that's an absolutely great example. But there's another one that we wanted to show you, and um, mostly because it utilizes one of the new features that we've launched with events, which we are super excited yeah, about. It's really, I've been it's really this great. For ages. It looks <laughs> amazing. So this example here, House of Friendship. So what they've actually done is embedded that events page directly onto your, onto the website. So you'll see, for example, this last one we looked at kind of lives there under a Canada Helps URL, kind of in that tab. Um, but this example is the House of Friendships website. So it just means that your purchases can be coming directly to your website staying on your website, and they can actually purchase tickets directly on there. Um, so this is an awesome, awesome example. As we said, we do see a lot of golf tournaments at the moment. I think maybe it's the time of year, although yeah. it's raining yeah. today, but I know that Not very a lot of people are out playing golf. Yeah, Apparently it's meant to be nice this weekend. Okay. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Um, so yeah, so they've um, built a, an event, exactly the same process as the other example we saw, and um, they've chosen a slightly different color palette because it matches along with their website, which is lovely. They've got a, a few more kind of ticket types on there, all the different options, as well as sponsors, which is another great one to kind of pop through here. But again, it looks very similar to the last example, but it is embedded directly onto their website. And as you can see here, they also have um, that attendees um, page kind of switched on here. That's just great if you want people to know kind of who's coming. But Polar, again, you can talk about that in a, in a little bit. So yeah, this is a feature that we are super excited about. We're all about at Canada Helps making sure donors and fundraisers and anyone that wants to engage with you is coming directly to your website. And now these tools, because they can live right there, don't get me wrong, in the back, we're still kind of doing that processing. We're still sending those tax receipts out. Um, but it just means that people can buy those tickets on your website and they can remain on your website after they've sort of completed that. Exactly. So and it really helps to avoid that donor drop-off that can happen when you're yeah. redirecting people from tab to tab uh, and really allows people to just stay on your site in case they want to do a little bit of bruising and, and, and find out more about you. And you might convert them into a monthly donor. Exactly. You never know. So that's definitely <laughs> our this great is the goal. <laughs> All right. Awesome. So shall we move to the back end then? Let's do it. So now we're going to show you um, how to actually set one of these events up. So we're just going to jump into the account. So some of you that are watching may have seen this, some of you maybe not, but when you log into your Canada Helps account, this is what you should see. Um, and this is what we call the dashboard, where everything um, that you have access to lives, basically. Perfect. So like Laura said, you're going to have your three tools here. So when you come on to uh, create an event, you're just going to want to click on the events tab and you'll have a uh, button there that is create new events. So that's what you would be clicking to create a new one. Any events you already have running will be towards the bottom of your screen and you'll notice every single one has a view, edit. There is that embed option should you want to embed your event. All you do is click on that. 
it copies the code for that event onto your clipboard and you're able to paste it into the uh, file of your website wherever you'd like that event to appear. So really easy to manage, to edit, and to embed that event. But we're going to go in and create a new event with you. So we'll go tab by tab. So simply click create new event, pretty straightforward, and it will bring you to this page here. Perfect. So what we've done here is uh, we've created an event for you, but we're going to walk you tab by tab to show you what we did to create Champion that event. Shit dinner. So of course, yeah. in keeping with our theme, we are hosting a Raptor Championship dinner, um, which we're really excited about. So this event, uh, very first thing, the main tab that you're going to be working off of, at least initially, is the general event information tab. It is really the bare bones of your event. Um, it does uh, kind of require that you fill out everything here. Here, and the rest is really sort of customizing and adding those ticket types. So on this first tab, you'll be just essentially choosing your language. So your, it can be English, French, or bilingual. So entirely up to you. All of our tools are bilingual. They so are. Just a button. Exactly. <laughs> um, the event page URL, you create that as well. So usually, uh, you know, charities will essentially name it what the event is called. You'll just create that uh, URL. So our URL goes along with our name as well. Um, you'll give the event a title, and like Laura mentioned, that overview, you want to make it as detailed as you want. Um, so, you know, giving extra details about the event or perhaps why it is that you're hosting it, it's entirely up to you how much info you want to give your purchasers here. Moving down to the next section, it's the same thing. So this is sort of those extra event details, usually um, more around the technicalities of it, so maybe start time, end time, things that they might want to know about the venue, etc. But entirely up to you how much info you'd like to provide here. An uh, important section here would be the fund designation. Um, it's really smart to choose a specific fund or to create a specific fund that's uh, perhaps specific to your event only because it does allow you to sort of earmark um, that all donations and all ticket purchases made through this event should be, um, again, earmarked or sort of put towards that specific fund. Organization. Exactly. Organization is key. Exactly. For in sure. the back end, in your reports, it's going to allow you to keep track and easily see that all of those donations should then be uh, internally directed to that fund. Um, so you are able to create a new fund here or choose from a fund that you already have in your account. Other couple of things that can be toggled on or off would be the amount that you've raised so far, if you have a specific goal, again, the number of attendees, and if you want, you can display that attendee list. We did see that in the golf tournament example. Again, it's entirely up to you. Sometimes the nature of the event does call for a, a attendee display list. For example, if it's a high school reunion, people might want to see who else is joining in, at the event. So then you could put a little bit That's of information. <laughs> That's talking. Yeah, well, Before your high school reunion. Well, maybe you want to know who's the member. I know, I agree. For sure, yeah. for sure. So that you have some information <laughs> about your charity. And towards the bottom, it's really going to be the details about the event itself. So when does it start? When does it end? Where is it taking place? What number can be reached should they need to uh, contact the event, the, you, the organizer? And again, that call for volunteers that we saw in that first example, the gala, here you can go ahead and put in that little blurb uh, calling for volunteers should you need them, as well as a contact information if you do. Uh, bottom details again will just be the organizer information. In this case, it is us, the charity hosting that event. It might be a third party, might be one of your sponsors, so that's where you'd be putting specifically that organizer information. So once you hit save, you really have your bare bones event, and then from there you want to start kind of the other customizations. So in this case, we'll head on over to the next tab, next tab being Media Library. Essentially, I like to call it sort of the, the picture and video bank. This is where you're going to go to yeah. upload any images, Photos. of course, These any awesome. images, impactful images relating to your event. Uh, maybe it's an event that you hosted last year or something having to do with what you'll be presenting this year. But essentially, this is where you upload all of those videos, all of those images that you want to have appear on your event page. You do have to upload them here first before they can appear anywhere. And I think as well, just to mention, just be mindful here um, of kind of the sizes um, and uh, dimensions that it requires because that's super important sometimes as well. Okay. So, yeah. Awesome. Perfect. Thank you. So, as we go on to the page visual tab, anything that we've uploaded previously, we can now select here. We're essentially just telling the system where we want those images to appear. So, we've selected our banner image here. Awesome image. If I do Good myself. picture. Uh, we're going to select from that color palette. You have about 10 different ones that you can choose from. Again, matching your branding, your website. Raptors. The Raptors, Raptors branding. Palette. We knew, I mean, it was we knew from the start. It was meant to be. We knew. Entirely. 
<laughs> so we've chosen that palette. Again, we go through and now we tell the system what images we want. For a media carousel, we just select them from the list of images we've already uploaded and then we add them to our carousel. With that done, we have all of the visual aspect of our event ready and good to go. So the next tab over, probably uh, your most important tab uh, would be your tickets and tax receipts tab. So what you're going to be coming onto this tab, like Laura mentioned, to uh, create those ticket types and to set that tax receiving option. So right away, the system will ask you, will you be issuing a tax receipt for this? Yes or no? If it's a yes, this is where you decide, okay, will that tax receipt be sent instantly upon purchase or will I be sending that after the event is over? If you select instant, any tickets that are bought sent right away, the tax receipt will be sent right away. Otherwise, post-event, I will show you in the manic section where you would go in to send those tax receipts after the event. Uh, next thing, you really just want to upload an authorized signature and a logo. Why do we ask you to do this? Because you actually become the issuing party for uh, the tax receipts. We do all the admin work in actually generating them for you, but because you've set that tax receivable amount, it actually is your charity's uh, logo and signature and VN that we would be issuing that tax receipt under. So we do ask you to upload those two things. Next section again, really important, ticket sales start period. Essentially, when do you want those ticket sales to go live? Uh, the day that that hit, that the moment that that day hits, your tickets will appear in your events tool, and people can start buying them. Donations again can be toggled on or off, depending if you want to accept donations for the event. It's a cool little feature. Yeah, yeah definitely, feature. definitely. Yeah. So, like Laura likes to say, you know, it's like cheeky little ask, but you can just include that there. I love that you say that. <laughs> that you can include <laughs> that before. I that do you say cheeky little ask. I think that's not a word that you use. I do like, I do like it. it. It's very, it's very you. <laughs> So you do accept that there, and you can toggle that on or off really at any time. Sold out message, entirely up to you if you want to include one, but a little bit more of a personalized touch for when you know sales are over, but you might want to continue to accept donations. Attendee information just means it's going to collect the attendee details. So if a purchaser buys more than one ticket, you'll be collecting the names and the email addresses of the purchaser, of the people that essentially will be joining the purchaser. So I might buy four tickets, so you'll just ask me not just my details, but the details of the three people that will be joining me. This is essentially where you decide whether you want to collect that information or not. Awesome. And then, last but not least, the ticket types. So essentially, where you come to actually create those tickets that you're going to offer your purchasers. You give that ticket a name, a description if you'd like, you set that price and that tax receivable amount if applicable, and as well you want to set maybe a max a quantity available, perhaps it's limitless, and same for maximum per purchase. So really just you get to customize those aspects of the ticket. Um, and like I said, it really is updated in real time, so once a ticket has reached the quantity available, it will mark a sold out, and we'll show you an example of that as well. I think it's a nice way, just when you've got so much already on your brain and Definitely. organizing an event, that you can set this and then you know once you hit that maximum number, exactly. it will just show as sold out. For so it sure. just means that you don't have to panic exactly. about who's coming to that page. You know once you're kind of full yeah. capacity, it will really it will ease, so, ease yeah. management for sure. And then the last thing you might want to add as well is a custom question. So you can ask up to two questions per ticket type. So essentially, you may want to ask if it's a dinner, you know, what is, do you have any dietary requirements? It could be a single response so they can type in the response or you might give them a multiple choice question they can choose from. Yeah, and I think maybe I missed that when we were looking at the front end, but where that would actually show would be in the, the flow of the purchase. Exactly. So when you kind of fill in your initial information as a purchaser, then just below that, the example we looked at didn't actually have one on there, but it would just show there. So it would just pop up, do you have any dietary requirements? That would be captured and then when you're kind of pulling that list of attendees, you'll see all of that exactly. information there as well. And then the last tab that we'll just show you before we show you the final product would be email preferences. So essentially anything related to email. So the uh, if you want to customize the email that will go out to your purchaser, that will go out to your purchaser if they've also made a donation um, that you want to send out once the event is over and you're sending out a tax receipt. So you have an area where you can uh, customize each and every one of those emails. The same, you can customize the email that goes out to the attendee as opposed to the purchaser. So you can definitely take advantage of this for that more customized and sort of personalized touch. Yeah, I think it's nice that it's coming from your organization exactly. directly. So the way you kind of steward donors and speak to them already, you can really carry that through Definitely. on any emails they're getting from here. Definitely. And also if you want to set reminders so that people are reminded a day or a week before the event, um, you can do that as well. So that being said, we'll show you what we've put together. Here's our other champions of dinner. We hope you all come and join <laughs> us. 
Um, <laughs> this is fake. This, this is, is fake, by the way. Please don't try Good to buy enough it. people turning up to <laughs> Especially when they see the guest list. Oh, yeah, exactly. We'll show you that in a moment. So you'll notice we have that banner image. We've toggled on that progress. Uh, we're almost there, you know. We have our sold out ticket because apparently all of our VIP tickets have been bought. Okay. Um, we're including that donation ask. We have some videos and some images that we're showcasing. And we have our attendee list. And oh, look who will be Yo, coming to the event. Kawhi. Well, well, I knew it. You, this is not how you spell his surname. No, I fixed it. <laughs> you actually can fix it. So my apologies. We, you can edit. She, we did tell her she'd spell it wrong yesterday, I but she's I a edited. true fan, you know. I know. Why. It's a lie. I know. My I'm gonna, when you to meet all the real Raptors fans up. The when, true Raptors fans When you meet him tomorrow, I'm going to tell it. Definitely. You've messed up that. So this is our event here. So you will you saw how easy it is to put something like this together. We're just going to show you super quick what it's like to manage the event, and then we'll move on to our peer-to-peer -to -peer tool. Awesome. So when you go into manage your event once ticket sales are live you really just have two sections where you're going to be living in it's essentially the sales and donations tab this is where you're going to come to pull those reports or to get a quick view of all of your online sales so essentially your purchasers and anybody who's made a donation if i click on anybody's name i'm able to do a series of actions so email them edit them resend tickets resend receipts etc I can download that CSV at all times. And a really important part of this section is a new feature, which we're about to tell you, is the Add Offline Purchase. So essentially, this will allow you to issue, so to record and issue a ticket and a tax receipt for any offline purchasers. So what do we mean by that? Anybody who's buying tickets by cash or by check or who's maybe buying tickets the day of the event and can't use the tool, you can just come in here, tell the system that you sold that ticket offline, record that person's information and we will generate a ticket and a tax receipt to send to that person. All we have to do is just put down that person's email and their basic details and then the system can generate those two things and send it um, off to them. So it really allows you to have everything in one place, all of your purchasers in one place and a really consistent experience for everyone because they're all receiving the same receipt and they're all receiving the same tax receipt. Amazing. And then lastly, just the attendees tab is going to unite everyone, so the purchasers and the attendees, and you have a series of actions you can do here as well when you have a list of attendees, uh, mainly being uh, messaging them or checking them in. Uh, but again, you can resend those tickets as well and download those reports if you need. Yeah, so just an awesome way to kind of manage everything that's going on. It's all in one place. You see here it's counting down those tickets. You know what's kind of happening and who's coming. So just a super simple tool to stay in control. Yeah, definitely. To be organized. So Amazing. So, yeah, so that's events. Um, I think we're definitely going to have some questions towards the end. And um, so we will dive now into... Peer-to-peer -peer. Peer -to -peer tool, exciting. So the peer-to-peer -peer tool. So what is peer-to-peer -peer fundraising? Um, and I think really this is a great one to use for kind of those, you know, third-party fundraisers. For when you're using or like utilizing people that already support you, you want to turn them into fundraisers themselves. So you want them to fundraise on your behalf. So kind of the common one that we see time and time again are, are sort of those thon style mm -hmm. events. So a bike a thon or a run a walk a thon. Mm -hmm. But we've seen a whole host of like these used for sort of all different yeah. things. And um, so it's basically a kind of campaign that you can set up overarching that allows you to have a sort of base. Uh, platform for people to go and visit and then set up individual but also team pages so very quickly and um, they can have their own individual fundraising page that they can share with friends and family and, and begin to fundraise for you so it's an awesome way yeah. to kind of leverage that support from people who already support you and you know they want to be engaged with you so I think oh. Pilar you're going to show us a couple of examples yeah, I'll show you and guys. then mm -hmm. we can jump into the back end sounds well, good right? so I'll show you guys a couple of um, actual examples of peer-to-peer -peer tools that are running. So like Laura said, it's really that tool that is, so traditionally the peer-to-peer the -peer, um, sort of fundraising model was kind of going around to your family and friends, you know, maybe with a pledge form, with your little bag where you collect change, um, and you collect donations that way. Well, we're taking that and we're actually moving it online so that instead of having to go door to door, you're seriously, you're just using your page and uh, sharing that, you know, leveraging that power of social media to connect with your family and friends that way. And they can all make a donation online directly on your page uh, and be issued those tax receipts right away. And you as a charity don't have to do any of that admin work. Uh, and you can have a really uh, fun sort of uh, exciting event with lots of participants and teams and, and really has a sort of ease of, of management and everything. 
So the example we're looking at here is what uh, Bird Studies Canada calls their Birdathon, which uh, essentially they have running year round. So it's fantastic uh, because it actually is not centered around a specific day or a specific event, but rather is a campaign that's meant to encourage their their sort of donor base to fundraise year round on their behalf. So I'm able to come on at any point throughout the year and either create a team or join as an individual have my page up and running in five minutes and start fundraising that way. So when I come onto the peer-to-peer, -peer, very similar to the events tool that we just saw, visually you can play around with the color palettes that you choose and with the media images that you add onto it. So in this case, the charity has created a really beautiful banner image and they've added a media carousel and then they've customized the other aspects, including you know, the information that they're providing um, their, their participants and such. So when I come on here, I'm able to see the amount that's been raised, the amount of time that there is left to raise, and I could do a couple of things. So as a donor, I might just want to hit donate now, and I'm brought directly to the bottom of the page where I can make my donation directly on the campaign page. So I might want to sign into a team, I might want to sign into a participant, but I don't have to. I can just make a donation to the overall campaign and get my tax receipt again right away like I would on any other tool on Canada Helps. If I'm uh, okay with it, my donation will appear on the supporters wall, which does update in real time to show the donations that are coming through the campaign. And so does the leaderboard. So wh whichever team has fundraised the most, whichever fundraiser, individual fundraiser has raising the most, they're going to be moved up and down the leaderboard. So really helps to inspire that friendly competition, that sort of uh, camaraderie among the different participants. Um, and so that's what I could do if I'm going uh, as a donor. Otherwise, as a donor, I might instead want to actually look into one of my team, uh, one of the team pages or one of the participant pages. So I can look them up if I know exactly who I'm looking for, or I can just scroll through the list as well. So it's really easy to navigate from page to page. I'm able to easily click into this uh, member page here. It's uh, the love bird, which is adorable. Cute. And um, you'll notice the language changes slightly to donate to me. So it's no longer just donate, or it's not donate to team, but donate to me because I'm on a team member page. I see a unique goal put together by the member. I see their story, and I see the images that they've chosen to upload to their page. It's very much a templated page because you'll notice everybody has that same color palette, that same beautiful banner image, but I'm able to donate on this specific page towards the very bottom and again, add that on to the supporter wall if I want, get my tax receipt right away. And a really great thing about this tool is that if I make a donation on a team member page, it's going to bump up the progress bar of this member going to bump up the progress bar on his team's page and it's also going to bump up the progress on the overall campaign. So those pages really talk to each other, um, are all updated sort of in real time um, and to really kind of help uh, encourage that, that fundraiser from your donors. Okay, for sure. And I think something that's super important about this platform and something that the success of this really rests on is this ability to share super Definitely. easily. So again, similar to the event, we've got these share buttons here, so Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, email, um, and peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, it does really rest on, you know, get the word out there. It I'm does. fundraising for this amazing course, um, this amazing cause, mm -hmm. so why don't you fundraise too? So, if you, you know, direct people directly to your page and say, why don't you join my team, exactly. or why don't you donate directly to me? So it really helps that you can just kind of share these pages, both the overall campaign page, but also the particular team or particular exactly. individual's page as well. And not to mention that kind of going off that, to actually participate in a, in a campaign is really easy. So to either create a team or join as an individual, all participants need is an email address. Um, the system will just ask them to create a free Canada Helps account if they don't already have one. Laura uh, will show you as well. We will show you later um, what kind of that sign up is like. Yeah. It's especially because now we do have that paid P2P aspect, so we will run through that as well. But it really is simple, and as well, Laura will show you the back end, how you as a charity can help um, facilitate that sign up by giving uh, everybody kind of a pre-created standard page that they can then kind of customize on top of. So we'll definitely show you how that's done. But just to show you a couple of more examples that are a little bit different, but play off of some of the same things. This is a really great example of a campaign that's taking advantage of another feature we also just released, so another yeah, new feature. Which is exciting. It really well. is. I'm super happy about Definitely. That. So now you're able to actually turn off that team participation. So if for whatever reason you don't need or want your participants to have to join teams, they can just fundraise individually. 
So this campaign, for all intents and purposes, is very similar to the other one, except it doesn't have that create a team button, but rather create a fundraiser. So everybody is going to be fundraising individually as opposed to part of a larger team. Awesome. In the same way, you can have people, um, basically, you can make it so that they have to join a team. So you'll notice that there's no create a fundraiser or join as an individual button. There's rather just the create a team button. And this is a way of ensuring that everybody is part of a team and that nobody has a kind of a standalone page. So you are able to customize that as a charity and decide what kind of a campaign you want to run. Yeah, and I think it's really important to point out that this platform, you know, we do see a lot of thong events run, style events run through here, but as we said, there's a host of different ways that people are using mm -hmm. them. So I think often for organizations, organizations, it can be a bit uh, scary to say, hey, we've never done a peer-to-peer -peer before. Mm -hmm. um, how's this going to work? What do we need to do? Does it need to center around, you know, an event that's going to take a whole host of resources and, and it's a lot of work? We know that you're all super time restricted and often working a million jobs, although you have one job title, mm -hmm. as I think a lot of people are in the sector. So we've really created this platform so that you can give it a go. Mm -hmm. And so we've seen people do it around like a, a walkathon, mm -hmm. but just like with uh, the birdathon, that's something that they have kind of running yeah. and open all year. So it's more just encouraging people to do something, but also fundraise. But I also wanted to show um, a really cool example that we had here that's even a step back from this, um, and that is this one here. So um, Autism Canada have got this awesome campaign that they set up inside out for autism and um, they set up this kind of micro site for that specific campaign and then they linked through um, one of our peer-to-peer -peer pages onto here so what this really asked people to do they said we've got this campaign running um, but rather than saying you know this one thing's happening do this for us they've left it open they've kind of said you know do something for us um, they've got corporates they've got people maybe having like birthday mm -hmm. parties mm -hmm. so it doesn't necessarily have to be tied to a specific day this could be just something that you have up on your website year-round that when you get that person exactly. who says I want to climb a mountain for you or I want to hold my have a birthday party mm -hmm. and, and give the donations to you you can send them to a page um, that kind of keeps everything together so you can see what's going on it mm -hmm. and it can kind of run towards an overall Goal. Exactly, exactly. So that's a really good point. It does not need to be centered around one specific day, but really can be leveraged to get that excitement, that that kind of participation from your donor base, and, and being able to also manage kind of those pages, kind of be aware of who's fundraising for you, for what cause, how they're doing it. So you're able to kind of have everything in one place um, by having, uh, by directing people to a peer-to-peer -peer campaign if they want to fundraise for you. Awesome. All right. So now we're just going to take a quick look at the back end like we did with events just to show you how a peer to peer would be created uh, and managed as well. So I just want to check in. Are we good for time? Is everyone still with us? It's a lot of information. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but also just to mention, um, we are always here if you want to kind of follow up on anything sort of after this. Um, I'm sure we'll speak about it a little bit at the end, but mm -hmm. our team is really here to help you implement these tools. So we can always have a more detailed conversation kind of one-on-one -on -one after the fact. Um, so yeah, as Pilar said, let's dive into the back end of uh, the account here. So very similar to sort of how the um, events and we'll set up under this little tab, you have a P2P tab here. So same kind of concept, you click create new peer-to-peer -peer campaign, and this will then open a page that looks like this. So this is my Raptors Champions Basketball Challenge. It's a bit of a mouthful, I think. <laughs> I think I might change the like Raptors song. We might have called it Raptors. That's okay. Smart, well, smart, wait, smart. The great thing is that that yeah. can be edited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you're smarter than me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe we'll edit this afterwards. So I've got a basketball challenge that's going on. I want teams to be involved. I want people to be involved. I want people to come and play. Mm -hmm. So this is basically how I would set up the peer-to-peer -peer campaign. So very similar, and you'll see that it echoes kind of the events template quite similar. Yeah, so a lot of it, once you've done one thing, you'll know how to use the other tool as well. Sure. So just to run through here, again, you can kind of select uh, the language you sort of want this running in. Next thing, the name, the campaign URL, we the north. I feel yes, like maybe this that's is like perfect. taken already, but Probably. anyway, yeah. Um, then again, you can pop in the about text. Obviously, we've not popped too much in there, but you can put kind of a whole host of things as you will have seen on like the Birdathon example. Mm -hmm. Then a little bit further down here, just a couple of things that I wanted to point out because these are the things that offer a little bit more customization. Mm -hmm. So sometimes things that you want to sit and say, okay, how do we want this running? Mm -hmm. 
So the first one of which um, is access status or status. Mm -hmm. You say status. Say boss status. Okay. <laughs> um, so this basically is is how open you want the peer to peer page to be. So great. If you want this page to kind of be live and anyone that comes across it can sign up, then you sort of leave this open to everyone up on there. But there's also a couple of other options. So if, for example, it's something where you only want certain people being involved. So a common one that we kind of see is you're pitching your board members mm -hmm. against each other. So you only want your board members setting up teams so you can decide that you'll approve or request to join. And that simply looks like someone will come, they'll request to join, you have to log into the back end of the account and kind of just uh, approve that request or say, no, you're not on the board, you're, and not, you're not getting in. And, <laughs> and once that's down. approved, exactly. And once that's approved, they're just going to be getting an email letting them know that they've been approved and then they can go in and, you know, edit their page if they need and just start sharing it and fundraising. Yeah, and then just another step up from there, I'll send all invitations. So again, you can have it so that basically no buttons kind of show on exactly. that initial page to sign up. It's just that you're sending invitations to people and then from that email, they'll be taken directly to the registration. So just different levels of kind of how people are accessing that, this page. Then a little bit further down here um, is what we talked about in terms of the new feature of turning on or off teams and individuals. So this is basically where you decide if you want teams on there um, or if you definitely want it that people, are, they have to join a team. You don't want people just kind of roadly setting up individual pages. Um, it's just a case of kind of ticking this on here. So next section, and this is something that's awesome. Yes. Um, so I know a lot of you have been asking for a while, we need paid registration with our peer-to-peer. -peer. So this is, you know, you're having a peer-to-peer, -peer, there's an event going on, but before people can begin to fundraise and have their own page, they need to pay uh, a registration fee. So this is um, often kind of not tax receivable because mm -hmm. it's normally, you know, um, you're getting a, a shirt mm -hmm. to, to ride in the bike-a-thon or you're paying for kind of your court mm -hmm. time. Um, so this basically allows you to have a paid registration element to the sign-up process for people that are getting involved. So we will look at what we set up here from the front end, so we'll show you exactly what this looks like, um, but just to kind of show you how this works. So the actual paid registration element um, is set up in an event. So just as Pilar showed you, you quickly pop together an event. You don't need to worry too much about how actually how that event looks because the only section that will be used with this paid peer-to-peer -peer is the kind of ticket, so where you'll pop that registration element. Um, so we kind of pop together one here and it will show and you can link it very quickly to here. So we'll show when we go through the process how that kind of looks for people, but this is awesome because it now means as well as setting up a page and getting fundraising, getting people fundraising, they've gone through that registration process. You know you've got that registration cost sorted before exactly. people proceed. And there's no sort of diverting them to another page like it used to be in the past. That paid aspect is going to be part of the peer-to-peer -peer sign up all on the same screen. That's right. And that's why we kind of say don't worry too much how that event page looks because the only thing that peer-to-peer -peer participants will see is the peer-to-peer -peer page and the sign-up process. So super excited that now we can kind of do that one on there. Um, a little bit further down here, just some other basic stuff. Um, so this kind of a, is some information that appears at the bottom of any emails you send from this platform. So often people just put a bit of blurb about their charity on there. Charity support email, start and end dates as well for the campaign, and also a goal amount, which I think is awesome for the peer-to-peer, -peer, really mm -hmm. encourages people to get involved. Definitely. Again, similar to events, uh, you pop in kind of which fund you want this to funnel into. Organization is always key. Last little couple of things here, uh, the first of which is offline donation control. So you have the ability here um, to upload offline donations that you've received. So all this basically does is kind of bump up that goal bar. So you have that 100,000 that you're going after, or the 2,000 or 10,000. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you'll always have people that want to give cash, they want mm -hmm. to give check, and sometimes it's nice just to keep track of that. So from the forward facing, everyone that's involved in the campaign can really see where you guys are up to. So what this allows you to do is just decide who has the permissions to add that. Often people kind of opt for charity admins just because it means you know you definitely have the money before you pop that onto the bar, mm -hmm. but you can give access to team captains and also everyone, so participants as well if that's something that you exactly. wanted to do. Last little thing here again, category tag. So this just allows you to basically set up um, two different divisions or two different kind of... Uh, or locations, or maybe. locations, that's a great exactly. one. But if you're running maybe a, a run-a-thon or a walk-a-thon that takes place in multiple cities, yeah. you could have, you know, your tag type these cities and the different tag values are, you know, Mississauga, Brampton, yeah. this, that. So all the different cities and people as part of the sign-up 
say, okay, I'm uh, fundraising as part of this city. Yeah, so it makes it easier for people as well to kind of find the teams on the exactly. page. They can kind of filter through, for example, this one, sort of the basketball, and we have these two different divisions. So when someone comes onto the page, they say, oh, I know that the team that I want to be involved with is part of the adults division. So it just allows you to, to find things a little exactly. bit easier. Um, awesome. So that is really the, the basis mm -hmm. of the peer-to-peer, -peer, exactly. and then we can get started. Um, so that kind of sets up the initial uh, details. So then I just wanted to walk you through the other couple of things that are on here. So the next page we're going to look at is the participant pages. So if any of you have used this platform before, and um, maybe more recently you may have seen this, but this is something we added, I think in the last 12 months? Yes, yeah, 12 months. So we were getting a lot of feedback that, um, you know, people are running peer-to-peers. Maybe 75% of the people that were involved were super engaged. They were setting up their fundraising pages. They were adding images. They were writing beautiful stories. But you'll still always get a small percentage of people who want a fundraising page, but maybe they've not got time to kind of upload images and different mm -hmm. text. So what we did, we've enabled um, default participant, uh, participant default, sorry. Um, so what this means is that you can actually upload an image and pop up a little bit of text that when someone signs up for a page, as a starter, they'll have this on their page. Don't get me wrong, people can still go in and add a whole host of customizations and even join that sign-up process. They, they can, can customize override. that page mm -hmm. for sure. But it just means that you're catching those people that maybe aren't going to upload an image so that when you're looking at your campaign page kind of forward-facing, it looks nice. There's yeah. an image on Everybody everyone's has, page. Exactly. There's at least a little explanation of what's going exactly. on. And you can also um, add on here a participant goal. So it's something that you really mm -hmm. want to encourage people to go mm -hmm. after. Um, so yeah, that's a super cool feature that we added and I think it, it can just help to, to make it kind of all run through. We can also do this with teams as well, so also team defaults, which is awesome. And um, same thing, you can have that text and initial um, image and, and also goal. Again, that will just be on there, they can customize more if they want. Um, and then a little bit further down here is um, the option to upload fundraising tools. So this is if you want anything else kind of available to people that are getting involved with you. So, you know, more detailed event information or a map that's on a PDF. Exactly. Or just, you want to upload email templates to say, hey, yeah. use these templates when you're reaching out to your family and friends to request right. donations. So all different resources that you might want to give them to help them fundraise. For sure. Um, and this can be, you know, PDF, Word document, it kind of lists it all there, but it just means that then in their kind of, um, in, their account, their donor in their account, donor account exactly. and when they're customizing their page, they can make use of those additional support exactly. tools. Awesome. So that is that tab. And then if I just pop over these, these two little tabs here, oh, it's asking me to save. This is good. Did I change anything? <laughs> awesome. So then pop over, very, again, very similar to events. Um, you pop in all the images that you want on here. This is great because Pilar's added all of these to the media carousel for the event, so I got to just steal them, which was nice. Um, and same concept again with the page visuals. So upload that header image. Sorry, I prefer, <laughs> I prefer my I header think, image. I think this I is a bold. Well. I like this. this I like a, this, this is great. a lot. Um, so yeah, pop that header image up. Again, pick the palette, similar concept to events. We've gone with the red and black, of mm -hmm, course. Of course. Um, sorry, I might be scrolling too fast here. I'm going to slow down. I think it's not keeping up. Um, and then again, same as events. Um, you've got this media carousel, so just choose which images you want. Um, I've actually chosen to kind of order them in a certain order. Um, save, and then that'll be up there on your peer-to-peer -peer profile again. Last couple of tabs here. Donation presets, it's really like the same suggested donation amounts you could do on your charity profile. You don't have to have these, but you can certainly add up to four uh, suggested donation amounts that uh, you might want to suggest to your donors. Awesome. And then just this last little page here that we wanted to show you. Um, this is a super, a super cool function that we've added. So this actually isn't something you can use on a paid uh, registration peer-to-peer -peer page simply because um, you, we need to collect address just to verify the credit mm -hmm. card, so paying for that kind of registration. But for any peer-to-peer -peer page um, that doesn't have that registration, paid registration element, you basically enable this, and it just means that people can sign up for a page, first name, last name, uh, email address, so it just simplifies that whole process for mm -hmm. signing up. 
And last thing here, sorry I've been talking for a while, um, is custom fields. So this allows you to add things into that sign-up process for your participants. So it can be a text, maybe a waiver, um, or again a question. So multiple choice question, um, yes or no. So yeah, it just again allows you to kind of collect information from participants as they go through the process of signing up. Perfect. So shall we look uh, and see what this whole peer-to-peer -peer would look like then? Let's have a look. Oh, it looks wonderful. And Let we're already halfway to our goal. We are because of one. One amazing donation. Very generous supporter. Well, you look at that. And he spelled his, his, his name wrong. His name he must have forgotten. I know. Maybe he was drunk when he, did, <laughs> when he signed up for the event. I think I've so, been drunk since Monday. Definitely. Yeah. Oh, sure. yeah. <laughs> Okay, awesome. Yes, yeah, so that's what I mean. It looks I'm beautiful. So and we're just going to show you in the last little bit of time that we have left um, how easy it is to do that paid P2P sign up. So when I log, uh, when I go to join as an individual, it's going to look a lot like it currently does. But like Laura said, now I'll be told at the very top, Ooh, I do have to this buy. Image looks nice. Yes, that looks great. <laughs> I'll be told I have to buy my registration ticket. So once I log into my Canada Helps account or create one if I don't already have one. So I'm just going to log into mine. Oh, okay. Can I Let's express me. login. Yeah. So maybe you could explain kind of what yeah. the express login. So this essentially, is a cool definitely, once the system recognizes that your email address is associated with an existing candidate health account, it will prompt you to log in, which is great for people that already have an account. So you'll just be asked to log in, if not to create an account, and you'll just agree to these details. And as you scroll down. If all those details are still correct, you can see right away that registration ticket. We have just the one ticket type. Just like before, it is that express checkout, nice and easy. Uh, I have my card saved. I hit continue. And because I am now paying for this registration ticket, the system will allow me to complete that sign up. All I have to do, because Laura see, that was has my, my credit card having a wobble oh, there, yes. have oh. I got $3 left? <laughs> probably not. <laughs> probably after the records weekend, probably not. Yeah. <laughs> So now that I have paid for that, I'm able to complete that page sign up. Laura gave me those defaults, so she made it nice and easy. All I have to do is give my page a name, uh, and I'm happy with the things that she gave me. If not, you I can, can just override it. it or add it. Perfect. <laughs> and then I'm able to select a division because she does make that a required field. Uh, once I hit continue, I'm ready to go and start fundraising. So you see how easy that is. I'm brought right oh, to my donor like account. Second, I think we're oh, there, yeah, you go. there we are. <laughs> you can see how easy it is. Brought right to my the donor account. I can make any changes. I can manage my donations. If not, I'm good to start sharing that URL with my family and friends. And there you go. That's paid P2P registration. Yeah. And the other thing I just wanted to mention, we obviously walked through that. Um, with kind of a, an account that I had, but um, if you don't have that kind of quick sign in, you just basically pop in exactly a few different details and then set up that password, and it just allows people to go back in, keep track of the donations that mm -hmm. are coming in, and also make any customizations if they want to. Exactly. So super exactly. simple to sign up, and then off they go. They've they've got that page ready to go. And should we? Yeah. Ta -da. So this is the page that we created. Amazing. There you go, and then your fundraiser is off, and they can, and you can start get sharing fundraising. With your family and your friends. For sure. Okay, we just want to do a time check because we were going to show maybe the management section up to you, Jen. You make the rules here. Jen rules us with the nine. Okay, we have a couple, sure. so we'll do a really quick look at the P2P manage section. Super quick, which is uh, very similar. So uh, it's very similar to your events management section. So you just hover over to the manage. Got a couple of extra tabs here because you have one that's related to just reports. So you can pull those reports to keep track of your teams, of your individuals, of, or just of donations. Always going to be that Excel file, nice and easy. Um, and then you can click into your teams and participant tabs to manage those specifically. So you have a series of actions. You know, you can invite people, you can suspend them, you can delete pages if they're created by accident. So you, a lot of things you can do here, and even more so with your participants, because you're able to move participants from team to team. If somebody signed up to the wrong team, or they forgot to join as, as part of a team and instead created a single page, you can move those as well. Uh, and the same goes for your donations tab. So in your donations tab, you can add your offline donations. You can keep track. You know, you have your quick view of your donations here, and you can move donations from page to page as well if those were added onto the wrong page. 
I think that's a super cool feature because often people are sending this out to so many exactly. people. You know, sometimes someone comes along, maybe grandma signs it's and gave Kyle you. Lowry exactly. your donation when it should have been exactly. to, us. to us. So you can super easily move exactly. this between. It just basically gives you easy management. Mm -hmm. When you've kind of got this running and a lot of people involved, there can be a lot to kind of think of. So this just brings it all into one place. Um, and means you can stay on top of it. Exactly, and it's all there for you. You have those reports, so you're able to keep track of that nice and easy and, and, and just freeze. Yeah, I think as well, just give it a go. As yeah. with everything with Canada Helps, there's no kind of upfront fees or, or kind of a recurring yeah, cost. Definitely. It's only ever that transaction fee on donations. So set up a page, give it a go. You know, you already have a yeah. list of amazing people that are supporting you that are donating regularly. Maybe you can transition them into fundraisers and you never know how much you might raise. And as you can see, you know, create all the test campaigns that you need. There's absolutely no harm. You saw our two test campaigns. They're not searchable on Canada Help, so have fun with them. Uh, definitely test them out. And then yes, once you're you good to break go, anything. you really can't break anything. We love to break it. To, tell charity that so do have fun with the tools and reach out to us if you if there's something you want to do but you just don't know how to do it that's what we're we doing. are here definitely all right Woo! thank you Lauren for Laura that was that was an amazing presentation I think I'm uh, gonna give it about two or three minutes for a uh, question and answer period um, so a few questions have come in here uh, mostly to do with ticketing and events um, so the first question I have for you both what happens if you have to determine the receivable amount after the event based on the cost, true cost of the event? Well, that's the whole post-event tax receipt. The whole idea behind it is that it allows you to determine what portion of the ticket type um, you're able to uh, issue a tax receipt for. So that is something that you do have to decide internally. Um, the system won't decide that for you, but what you do, uh, what you are able to do once you've decided, what you, once you've set on that amount, you just head over to the um, edit, the manage section of your event. And the day of the event, you'll just head over. Um, oh, my apologies. It's actually the yeah, ticket and tax receipt section. Sorry. The day that the event I thought it was, but I would never. Yeah. I, I, I trust you. I trust you. <laughs> you head over to the tickets and tax receipts. The system will recognize that your event is over, and it will prompt you to input yeah. that amount. And there's literally a button that's generate, and it will send out those tax receipts right away. But you do have to decide that amount yourself once that event has ended. For sure. So it's it's just basically working out what value has exactly. kind of gone back to the purchaser. Exactly. So yeah. Perfect. Thank awesome. you. Um, so you might want to demo this one. If you are using Ooh. this this as in the events platform, and tickets can also be purchased in person. In other words, offline. Mm -hmm. Can you go in and update the amount of available tickets? Yes, so the for amount sure. of available tickets thankfully can be updated at any time. So if for whatever reason you hit your limit, you can add more. Um, and so you don't have to worry about that. Um, you can also do the opposite. And if for whatever reason you want to mark a market ticket as sold out, we can also show you how to do that. Um, but yes, the quantity available is something you can update uh, even once ticket sales are live. Awesome, thank you. Yeah. All right, I'm going to try to put in a couple more questions here mm -hmm. uh, because I, I don't want to keep everyone here. Um, how do you produce receipts for after the event if you're splitting the receipt amount? Maybe you can demo that. Well, we don't have a post event. Uh, yeah, so the only thing is because um, we can't kind of uh, manipulate it because we haven't had an, an event ourselves mm -hmm. that's passed that's where there passed. is a receivable mm -hmm. amount. Um, but basically how it works, can we kind of show it on here? What would happen? So you choose post event tax receipt. You pop in kind of how much um, is, is the, the cost mm -hmm. of the ticket further down when you set up the tickets. Once the event has happened, it's passed, and you say, okay, we know now how much is eligible. What would pop up here is basically a box, and it will prompt you to, to send out those receipts. So it will just have the different ticket types listed, mm -hmm. um, and then it will say how much is eligible exactly. for receipt. So exactly. you pop it in for each different ticket, click send, and everyone um, that has uh, bought a ticket will get then get that receipt. Exactly. We have a system recognizes who's bought what ticket type yeah. uh, and so we will send it to the email address of that purchaser and again it's really easy it's hard to visualize because we don't have it here but it really is just a line item with your ticket type with a box for you to input that amount and then you just generate those all at once and those are all sent to your purchasers. Yeah. All right. Uh, I'm going to ask one more question, and I believe we have one in a poll to ask. Our oh, yes, we do. Uh, well, they're not as exciting <laughs> as the first one. <laughs> so, uh, one more question. Uh, another demo. Could you demo the check-in for an event? Oh, you sure. old thing? Yeah, for sure. Um, I think also, do you want to 
Yeah, well, for sure. Yeah. Um, so when you're in the manage section of your event, you're going to want to head over to your attendee section because this is going to be that complete list of attendees. So not just your purchasers, but the names of the people who they said would be joining them if you have collected that. Yeah. You would have your complete list here. So a couple of ways you can do it. Probably the easiest way is just to search by name as people arrive. Uh, once you've brought up that person, all you do, all you do is um, once you bring them up, um, oh, I don't know why it's not, not there, <laughs> but maybe I misspelled that too. But essentially, once you've found that person, you just want to click on the little box beside their name. You have a series of actions. In this case, you just click check in, and you'll notice that a little check mark will appear. You do have to apply that action, and it will uh, put a little check mark beside the person who actually joined. Um, we've used this for our events that we hosted here at Canon Sure. House. So I think the way we did it, we kind of just had this open mm -hmm. on a, a tablet, tablet, on, a mm -hmm. tablet on the night. So people came in, you can search for them by name, click check in, and that's kind of done. And the thing that's really nice as well is then when you download the CSV, exactly. you can see that there as well. So exactly. it will show who actually turned up to the event. So I think that can be really nice in terms of donor stewardship. So then afterwards, when you're following up, you can sending the right wording exactly. to who arrived, who, did, who didn't end up turning up. Thank but you for gonna, coming versus uh, we missed you at the event. Uh, exactly. exactly. So yeah, super useful tool. And um, you can have this open on, on laptops, iPads, on the night of the event. Yeah, so mm -hmm. super nice way to just keep track of everybody. Oh, so now what we'll do actually, just thank you all for your questions. Um, if you want to reach out to us directly with them, by all means, please do. That is what we're here for. Yay. But we will just do one final poll before we end up. Um, just want to know if you'd like, uh, if you'd be open to conversation about our tools, if there's any specific tool that you'd want to engage in conversation with, just so we can get a sense of who would like us to reach out. Uh, and we're happy to schedule demos going forward and, and any calls that you might need. Yeah, and we can reach out over the next week and, sure. and touch base and make sure if there's anything we can help you with. We're ha always happy to kind of talk in more detail about the tools, but also about you have a particular event. Is this going to work? Mm -hmm. We're very, we're happy to kind of uh, jump on a, a call or mm -hmm. even like a screen share and we can walk through and say, yeah, this is going to work. Exactly. Let's see how you can kind of get this set up. So exactly. please, please, yeah, feel free exactly. to, to reach out, but also, yeah, come back to the poll and we'll reach out to you. Alright, thank you so much Laura and Pilar, I believe that's all the time we have. Um, so folks, if we didn't get to answer your questions live, um, I'm just going to put over here the the contact details for Laura and Pilar, should you oh, wish to reach out to them. <laughs> and uh, yeah, please get in touch, and um, if anything, you know, subscribe to our emails for the latest tips about our fundraising tools. Uh, follow us on social media. Um, as always, thank you to our audience members from all across Canada. Go Raptors! Go Raptors. Go Raptors. Um, and thank you so much, Laura, Pilar, uh, and my co-presenter here, uh, Tess Margarten, from the charity engagement team. Um, have a great day, everyone, and we'll see you next time for the next webinar. Okay, bye. Bye.